Hey everybody, this is Discover DB2 and I, Mike Krafik. Today we're going to be talking about cataloging databases. It's one of the first things anybody ever wants to do. If you're not a DBA, you're using this to get some sort of tool to mine your data. If you are a DBA, you could be using this to get to a data source or pump data to. But it's something that's commonly done, it's done every day, and it's very simple. It's a total of two commands. And to be honest, this video could be done in two minutes. However, I'm going to go into a little bit more. I'm going to talk about why there are two commands and how do they work with each other. I'm going to show how to poke around and see what you have cataloged and what you don't. I'm going to show you how to do it as well as how to undo it and get some of the information that you're going to need if you were going to pass off database information to somebody else that wanted to catalog to your database. It's pretty simple. It's going to be quick. And if you're here just to learn the two commands that you need, I'm going to put timestamps down below to jump you to where you need in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. When you're trying to establish a remote connection to a database, there are two phases. There's the catalog node phase, essentially telling DB2 this is where the server lives and the catalog database phase which says this is the database or the many databases that live to that server so there can be a one-to-many relationship here the first part cataloging node you can think of as I'm specifying the house on a street there are many houses on this street that I can get to and they're identifiable by a house address and a zip code. Or you can think of a host name with its port. Now that host name can be referred to either as an IP, which is probably not good practice, or a DNS host name, which is going to be a server.companyname.com, or an even shorter name like just the dev BMSL01. Once you have those two pieces of information, a server name and a port, you can catalog a node. Now, the command syntax isn't hard. It's catalog TCP IP node node name. Now, this is a name you're making up. This is how you want to reference the server. So instead of saying 123 Main Street, I would say Mike's house. Then we go remote host name. Host name is the formal address, right? The 123 Main Street. In this case, it's going to be the host name of the server, either the IP, a fully qualified long name or short name. And then server port. The port number is like the zip code. This is actually where the front door is. Where do I go on this server to connect and authenticate to get to where I want? So in our made up example, we're going to connect to a development box. Now there are probably multiple development databases here for our project. So it's going to be catalog TCP IP node dev box. That's how I want to refer to it. Remote at the long host name as opposed to a short host name like dev BMSL01. And then server 50001. The DBA is going to need to give you the host name and the port every time. If you have access to the box, I'll show you how you can get there and get that information. After you catalog a node, we need to catalog a database. We have the specific house specified within DB2. It knows the address and the port. Now we may have two different people or too many, two different databases living there the dev db01 and dev db02, right? We'll say there are two different um, streams or two different projects going on at the same time. The command syntax isn't hard. Catalog database database name. Now, unlike the other one where node name was made up, that's how you want to reference it. DB name, database name is literally how it is cataloged on that box. There's something called an alias I'll show you later where you can make up a name for it if you'd like. But DB name here is the formal name of the database that lives on that box. At node node name. Node name is what we just set previously with the other command. It's the short name, it's the easy name that we put and assigned to 
the host name of the remote box. So catalog database dev db01, that's the formal database name on the box, at node dev box, that's the name we made up that links to the server that we want to get to. Then if there's another database, catalog database dev db02, at node dev box. In this specific case, once we're done, we will see two databases listed, both going to the same server. So let's put into practice what we just learned. I've got two windows here because I want to be able to show you linking, um, how the node links to the database. But let's start with the very basics. I'm on my development box. I'm on my sandbox on my personal laptop. Let's go ahead and see what even exists. So are there any nodes? DB2 list node directory. No, but that may be a little confusing because you're going to see this. I've got a database. Wait a minute. If I have a database, why isn't there a node? Well, remember, nodes are for remote databases. That is when you are trying to tell your current server, my target is going to be that server over there. So it's okay to have a database without a node. That usually means the database is local. It's on the server I am currently logged into. And another easy way to tell this is by the directory entry type. You see this indirect here? Whenever you see that, that means the database is here local on the computer you're in. And that's really helpful when you're sitting there and you're looking through a directory of 25 databases and you're wondering what's here and what's somewhere else. So let's go ahead and catalog our node, right? So it's DB2 catalog TCP IP node, the node name. This is the nickname I want to use to refer to the server that's somewhere else. So we're going to call it DevBox and we're going to say remote. Now this is the true name of the server. It's usually an IP, which you don't normally want to use, or host name. So in this specific case, we're going to say that the host name happened to be dev bmsl onecompanycom It doesn't have to be the fully qualified. Sometimes it's just this very first piece up here. And it's a server, S-E-R-V-E-R, -E and a port number. Now this is the front door, so I know where the server is. This is the door to actually go to. And I can show you a little later on how to get this information if you don't have it, but it usually has to be handed to you. And then it is a comment. Now, right here I could stop put an end quote and hit enter and it's going to work. But I like to have comments to know what these things are later on. So I'm going to write with single quote development box. And the comment string must be in single quotes. So I'm going to hit enter. It says it's completed successfully. Don't worry so much about the warning that says that a cache needs to be refreshed. Very rarely do I see that it needs to be. If for some reason it did, you can type the command db2 terminate, try again, or go out and come back and it should work. So let's take a look at what I have now. db2 list node directory. Remember, this was empty before. Boom, here we go. We got a new node name. Although the server is this formal name, I'm going to be referring to it as DevBox. And here's the port. Here's the front door I got to connect to. All right, so we have a node. Let's go ahead and catalog a database. And that's pretty simple too. DB2 catalog database. And we'll say it's something crazy, like because of naming standards, it's WC. Uh, 095D01. And we keep going. So it's create database. That's the formal database name. And that's one of the differences I wanted to point out. Before, I was giving it a nickname I wanted to refer to. There is something similar with a catalog database, but I'll show you that in a second command. So it's catalog database, the formal data database name, 
at node. Now this is the node name that we gave the server that we're trying to hit and it's dev box. And then because I'm awesome, I'm leaving comments. So with, we'll say this is the development DB01 database. There we go. All right, so we saw our node directory. We know we have a node. What about our database directory? Here we go. And it's one of the first that pop up. You can see a comment that we left, of a hint about what it is. We see the formal database name. This is how it's referred to on the target system. And remember what I told you about before, the cheat about the entry type. This is remote. I'm on a remote server. It's over there, not here, as opposed to indirect. Sample actually exists on the server I'm currently in. Now, this is a crazy name, right? Most people would say, hey, I need to connect to the Dev01 database or something that makes more sense. We would never refer to it as something nuts like this. So there's a modification you can make with the catalog database name. And it's DB2 catalog database. And let's say it's normally called WC 095 D02 for the other development database. And we're going to refer to it as DevDB02. That's its nickname at node dev box. And we'll say with dev db02. Let's see what we have. So here was our first one. Notice the database name is the same as its alias. Here's the second one. Its formal name is the complex nomenclature that we had before, but we can refer to it as devdb02. So you know your normal connect statement is connect to sample, right? This is the local one. But if I wanted to connect over to one of these, it would be db2 connect to and with the first one we did, we have to use oh, 95D0. We must use the complicated name because it does not have an alias. Now, I really don't have another server to connect to, so I can't hit enter here. But if I wanted to connect to the other one, I could either refer to it as its complicated name, notice the DO2, or I could refer to it as devdb02, and that is also valid. So we know how to catalog a database. We know how to catalog the nodes. We know how to look to see what's remote and what's local. One of the other things I said I would show you is, hey, how do I find something like the port? Let me clear this. Let's say you have access to the other database and you need to gather information. I'm assuming you know the host name because you needed that to connect. But the port, there is a way to tell what the port number is. And that is usually through the services file. Um, in this specific case, if I looked at my high level environment information, this is at the instance level, you can type db2 get dbm cfg, which means get me the database manager configuration. This is at the high level, not the db configuration. And I hit enter. You're going to have a lot, and I thought about grepping it out, but I wanted you to actually see it the long and hard way. See this here? The service name, that will be linked in the services file to a specific port. Now, I don't necessarily want to show you my services file, but what I can do is this. If I do cat etc services and I grep 
for that assignment, it pops up. The port number is 50,000. So if I needed to tell someone else how to connect to this server, I'd give them my host name and tell them that it's at port 50,000. Now, how do I undo this mess? Why would you want to undo this mess? Well, you could want to undo this mess because either a database is no longer there anymore, maybe you fat fingered the database name and you need to redo it. So let me pull up the directory again, db2 list database directory. And let's undo what we just did. So here's our directory and we're gonna work a little backwards. So we're gonna, before we were cataloging a node and then the database, we're going to remove the database then remove the node. So it's db2 on catalog database and we're going to do the complicated nomenclature first. It's pretty easy. And db2 on catalog database. And now notice this one, I'm going to refer to it as the alias. That also will work. So over here, back to my sample database. However, I still have my node. How do I undo that? How do I get rid of that node? The server no longer is there, it's been decommissioned. It's pretty much the same command. DB2 and catalog node dev box. This is the nickname I gave it, not the formal host name. There we go. Directory, if I could spell. Directory is empty. And we're back to base state where we were before. So we discussed the two pieces that need to be done to catalog a remote database. We saw the commands on how to list the database directory, to list the node directory to see what's there. I give you quick hints on telling what's local and what's remote. Uh, I showed you the commands to actually catalog um, when you're actually using kind of a nickname or its formal nomenclature. We talked a little bit about how do I go get the port if I needed to look it up for something else. And we talked about how we can undo the work we just did in case there was a fat finger. So this covers just about everything as it pertains to cataloging a database. Hopefully you found this useful and we'll see you next time.